Hey guys, welcome to News Coup Crew Podcast. This is chapter 1057. I'm your host, Christian, with my consistent co-host, Jesse. And today we're going to be covering chapter 1057, like I said, the final curtain. Now, hopefully, this is the final goodbye as well. We've been doing goodbyes every single chapter. We've been doing goodbyes for a while, and uh, we spoke a little bit, and not in depth conversation whatsoever, but uh, my first uh, inkling of this chapter was, uh, I really hope this is the final goodbye. Yeah, and I feel really bad. I feel really bad. Uh, but we have, we have told our tour, our story. Uh, we have, you know, told the tale, uh, and this just kind of felt like, a, a another recap to me, uh, like 1056 was, you know? Um, yeah, I'm with you. That, right. That's just my initial yeah statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, first, I don't remember if we were covering the cover stories of the we journal. We were, yeah. We were, good, yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Because I know your boys here want to cover yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, So, okay. Um, so uh, we see uh, Caesar Clown, uh, Germa 66, Cold-Blooded Voyage, Volume 16, Caesar's Poison Gas Attack. Um, and we see a uh, cloud-formed Caesar uh, attacking the Germa. I'm not sure what's in the the background. Exactly. It looks like kind of curry is throwing like, donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Actually, hold on. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. What's the... Is that knee? Oh, 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 oh. The reader we're using, we zoomed in and it <laughs> went down a bunch of pages when we did. Hold on. Yeah, that's just him rocking the, the germa. Yeah. Not much else to say about it. All right, then. I he, thought he was good. No, I, no. He, I, he filled the niche for, for my buggy fix. That's you fair. Know? Like, yeah. in, I, I love in t- incredibly intelligent characters that are socially known. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And Caesar did fit that bill pretty well. Yeah, I'm excited to see him come back with Germa at the end of all this. Yeah, yeah. It seems like that's where they're going with this cover story. Do you think this is the final cover story? I don't know. Like, the, oh, sorry, is this the final cover story that will have it? impact on the world at large? I kind of hope it continues. I mean, yeah, me too. Yeah. I just don't know what else they could cover. Like, yeah. Maybe they would cover, okay, maybe they would cover like the, okay, I know exactly what the fuck they're going to cover. Yeah. They're going to cover the journey of Yamato through, uh, through Wano. Yeah, that makes easy. sense. Real yeah, easy. Because uh, what's one of the first things that we see? Well, after, let's get into, let's get yeah, into let's the get first. Yeah, let's get into the yeah. actual thing. As we've done, I think every chapter so far, we come into Wano Capital. Yep. And there's actually a song playing with uh, the appropriate instruments whose names escape me right now. Shamasen. Shamisen, yes. yes that yes, was yes. it. I couldn't remember it. Shamisen. So it seems that there's a poem going on as they de- start to talk about what seems to be the night just a few weeks ago, I guess, yeah. that Luffy and crew took down Kaido and Orochi. Yep. As they go on to regale us with a tale that is wonderfully poetic, the roar of the Azure Dragon and the howls of countless other beasts join the cacophony. Really good imagery for the Beast Pirates yep. and Azure Dragon obviously being Kaido. He goes on to say, the stage is set for a tale of duty and honor. This is the story of the Royal Retainers. Okay, so it is... Oh, and their quest to let Kozuki Odin's name yes. shine once more. So this is, the re- this is the telling or retelling of the story for the Akazaya Nine. Well, yeah. they're less than that now, but yeah. the, original the original Red Scabbards. Mm-hmm. We then cut to the forest as we see more things going on between Yamato, Momonosuke, and Kinemon as they're discussing what's going to go on, and we see that Yamato is, in fact, staying. Yes, that was the answer to the cliffhanger that we had uh, in 1056 was yes. Yamato. Um, I have made up my mind. Yep. She's yeah. going to live her life like Odin. And yep. you know what? Staying here and traveling throughout Wano, as they talk about following in the footsteps, yeah. is a big part of it. Yeah. And fits and then, the bill. Yep. And fits the bill. I was, I was happy with that decision. We, we discussed that um, probably last chapter uh, specifically. Of I, I really liked Yamato. Um, shouldn't join the crew, though. Like, nah. like, at large. Like, you can be, like, the auxiliary crew kind of thing. Fleet, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. This is fleet territory, right? Yeah. But not, uh, I, I don't know. Oh. I wasn't feeling it. Fair, fair, fair. All right. On to Momonosuke, who is now expressing his feelings. Yes. Uh, He feels that he's been intentionally snubbed, that no one said goodbye to him. Yes. You know, real real diva attitude there, Momonosuke, but I get it. You know, this this was your found family for a little while after you had lost your family. So it makes sense. As we then cut into many, many flashbacks, starting with, you know, Kaido holding Momonosuke over the ledge, uh, Luffy introducing himself, Luffy. some of them uh, screwing around, and 
uh, Luffy telling him to ask him for help or like whatever. At I want to beat Kaido yep. as he cries. The resolve. Yeah, Luffy. Uh, he cries out as he's captured by our turncoat Conjuro. And then him all beaten up, saying that he's the man who will be the Shogun of Wano. In that perfect dedication to your dreams, he is who he is. The man who will be King of the Pirates. No, not this guy. This guy's going to be the Shogun of Wano. But (laughs) But in the the same same sentiment. Exactly. That that resolve that we see. Yes. And then that resolve comes right back when Luffy's saying, I will definitely Definitely defeat Kaido. Kaido. And that's kind of the quick uh, couple pages here. Uh, A little more than a couple pages for all the flashback content. For that particular scene, as he continues to talk about how he uh, how he feels being he's being wronged, yeah. uh, that is he really that heartless? Yeah. That one stood out to me. Yeah, and it's like no, it's not heartless. But you know, at the end of the day, remember we have to remember that we're pirates and we're free. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of it. And uh, you know, to have attachments and things like that, um, kind of is counterintuitive. You know, yeah. speaking of though. Speaking of the counterintuitive here, they don't quite understand that. Going as far as Kinemon to be like, I am the true ride or die. If he says something rude to you, I will cut him down yes. despite his heroism in this town. Yes. And then Momonosuke backs him up like, yeah, get him. Get him, Kinemon. In classic, you know, two tough guys are yeah. like, you know what? Screw those guys. Gassing each other up. And then the model's over here like, guys, I think you're blowing this up a bit. I think we're going to be okay. Mom's no, like, I think it's okay. He humiliated us, <laughs> overlooked us, all these other things. Then we get to a very calm scene. Yeah, I actually, actually will say, yeah, we're uh, we're we're all still on our respective ships, um, and I, I I thought it was just really funny because they're so gassed up, and then immediately jump cuts to everyone like, oh, wasn't that nice? A nice little adventure. Yeah, you say that, but the first thing Law says is, remember, the next time we meet, it'll be as enemies. Don't whine to me if we're shooting to kill. Yeah, no, nah, that's, I mean, they're best friends, all right? They're frenemies. We've been through so much. Yeah, I mean, they, I think they're going to be the, the more white beard gold Roger I relation. Hope so. You know, like they're going to be big yeah. and that they're going to be like friendly, but not friendly. Yeah, they fight, like it, it is on sight. Yeah. Um, no hesitation, but like they would fight for each other as well, you mm-hmm. know, and have, clearly. Yeah. But yes, yes, yes. All right. So Luffy's like, yeah, I got it. Uh, so Chopper's like, see you around. <laughs> in, in the nicest way possible, Law's like, fuck off. And Kid is set in sail. Oh, finally, Momonosuke travels in. It's like, hey, oh, hey, what's up, Momonosuke? And he's like, you monsters. <laughs> Meanwhile, full dragon form, full uh, height of his ability um, that he can now call upon. And he's using that to chastise them. Yes. Meanwhile, Yamato's like, hey, we came to see you off. Because she knows what's good. She knows yeah. they're all talk. They're not going to do anything. No, of course not. Uh, it comes out real strong. And then Yamato jumps out and grabs him. Do you, do you think Yamato jumped out and grabbed him like at Momonosuke's order here? Honest? Oh, yes. Because it says, you have angered the Shogun. What do you have to say for yourself? But yeah. she's, she's all here for fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. But, like, it's with a smile. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it. no, sorry. It's um, Kinemon who's saying Kinemon, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yamato really just came over here. And Yamato really, him. with a smile, is just like, hey. Yeah, and goodbye. Yeah, yeah. It's hey, a, and, it's a and hug, goodbye. Like a hug yeah. goodbye. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, Luffy, obviously, being like, I don't understand. And <laughs> Momonosuke being Luffy. This is an edict from the Shogun. <laughs> Please don't leave. I'll be so lonely. <laughs> I want to be with you forever. I can't end like this. I really like the face. Really well drawn. It's a really well drawn Very, face. very emotive classic one piece ugly crying i classic love that they let them ugly cry yeah it no makes one them is more safe. human no one is safe from being the gag and no one is safe from ugly yeah, crying exactly just like in real life yeah honestly i feel like the only times you get like the like not ugly crying are usually in like emphasis to a serious dramatic moment rather than yes it, like like for instance i feel like you, i don't remember it quite but back in any's lobby water seven mm. there was the uh usopp luffy fight yeah, and I feel like someone cried during that, but it wasn't an ugly cry. No, it was um, it was a cry of like you know resolve, yeah. where it's like head lowered, you can see the tears. That because that was it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, not yep. like Nico Robin. I I wipe a lib. I wipe a lib. Yeah, <laughs> love Nico Robin. Yeah, so so do I. Uh, and then he goes on to talk more and like you know thanking him for for all he's done for them. And then there's uh, just like I just said, actually, Nami is doing a like a single tear. Yes. Not ugly. Respective. Yeah. 
calling out that he's still a kid at heart. You gotta cut him a break. Yeah. And then, of course, Luffy calls out to Usopp. They throw over this black thing. And Luffy says, we've been waiting here all this time because I wanted to give you this. You can't play tough Shogun with me, Momo. Even if you're a bit bigger now, I know what you're like on the inside. You're a small, weak dummy. But I think of you like a little brother. And what does he have there? It's their Jolly Roger. It's the straw hat Jolly Roger on a big old flag. Yep. And of course, fly that flag. Hang it up somewhere in Wano in any ma- if any major bad news comes knocking, just point it to them. It'll let them know that they're screwing with us. Yep. And that is wonderful. And uh, Momo's like, does this mean that I'm one of you? Of course. Of I course. Mean, You've they, been the entire time. They don't actually say it, I don't think. No. No, they don't. Uh, and then uh, Luffy calls out to them. and is like, hey, if you ever want to be pirates, just let me know. We'll come pick yeah. you up. Yeah, don't <laughs> it's always room on my ship. Come be pirates with me when you decide to. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. That'd be really cool to get all like the ancillary cast of of, of movies. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, a lot of it ended up translating into the fleet. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, even even something as simple as like grabbing Kiros from from Dressrosa yeah. or like these, yeah. these characters that like kind of fought alongside us but weren't going to come with us to the next island. No, that would be cool. Yeah. Then Momonosuke declares, "Hark my words! Someday I will p- surpass Kozuki Odin." I almost said "persass." <laughs> uh, oh, Yamato says, are you talking about me? Wonderful, you know, still, Yamato is, is Kozuki Odin. We can't forget that. No. Nope. So what it looks like from there is they are leaving, and by they, I mean the Straw Hats, straw hats as yeah. well as a bunch of, oh, I just noticed, Brooke has a cute little hat. Yeah. It's, it's a nice yeah, little yeah, hat yeah, now. Yeah. It's like a little like, jazz hat. I'm going to scroll up real quick and see. Wearing it before? Yeah. Well, could we get a better shot of him wearing this hat? Uh, no, it's no, on screen there. No, it's, yeah, it was cut off. Oh, man. That's a cool hat. Yeah. Brooke. Brooke, you 80-year-old stylish old man. All right. So, they are talking about setting sail and the direction that they have to go. I mean, they talked about it previously when they were like, mm-hmm. east, east, northeast. Yep. Or something, something to that effect. Yeah, no, no. I think that was it. And they're saying, oh, you can get down nice and safe. We can get lowered by the lift because we don't have to travel up the waterfall. Because Isn't that is... great? Yeah, it's Finally, great. we can take the safe path. Yes. Who takes the safe path, kid says? Perfect for you horses. <sighs> and of course. Immediate uh, rage. Immediate rage from Luffy and Law, as we saw when they did the call out for the first person to dodge yep. is the loser. Yep. Or I guess last person to dodge is the winner. And so what do they do? Of course, they launch their ships off the side of the waterfall. Of course. What else would we do? Yes. Now, see, this isn't a big deal for us because we have uh, evolved past that after we broke our last ship yes. doing exactly this activity. Yes. Now we have wings. So we, I'm, I'm assuming next episode we'll be seeing the Sunny go taking to the skies. Taking flight. And mm-hmm. then maybe, hopefully, some news crew are going to come by and drop off a fresh pile of bounties. Hopefully. That's my hope. So... They all jump off, and we get back into the perspective of the narrator for that poem that we started this uh, this chapter out with. And it just goes down the thing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like reading this. Mm-hmm. The yeah, might of the outlaws recruited by Lord Momonosuke and Kinemon made them akin to real-life wisdom kings. Their power descended like a wrathful tsunami, obliterating all in its path. Even Kaido, the dragon king, and the yokai possessed giant Orion, Oiran, Oiran. O-I-R-A-N, Oiran, failed to withstand their assault. The heavens themselves were torn as painful shrieks reverberated through the air. But the yokai possessed giant Oiran. That's Big Mom. I just, I just picked up that they're talking about. Oh, that is, the, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. the whole descriptor for Big Mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And they said, it continued, During that chaos, Princess Hiori was accosted by Orochi, the snake that seemingly perished in the flames. In a desperate last-ditch attempt for a spiteful vengeance, his gambit was thwarted by a single slash, and who owns the blade that separated Orochi from his final cursed head? Why, none other than Kozuki Odin's second disciple, Denjiro, with his last one detached and burning... And... Oh, sorry. His last one detached and burning, the twisted Kurozumi... Kurozumi, yep was at long last brought to his knees. And then a flash of lightning marked the fall of Onigashima, and with it, the fall of the Dragon King Kaido. The sun had finally pierced the dark clouds that were suffocating Wano for 20 years. The skies were cleared. I think they mentioned dark clouds at the beginning of this poem. Yeah, they did. At the very beginning, mm-hmm. like the first line. Cool. 
Sounds from the ignorant masses celebrating the fire festival in the capital crept into their ears. Then suddenly, defying all reason, the burning remains of Orochi spoke. The Kurizumi's family grudge shall continue to curse this rotten land, generation after generation for all eternity. This is not the voice I think that we know Orochi had because mm-hmm. he was a little slimy. No, of course I, not. I, I but I like, like the, it because that's part of the storytelling. Exactly. Yeah. It should be part of the storytelling yes. to be putting the villain as big and powerful. Yes. You don't want to be like, oh, she's a villain. Like Orochi that, that actually more. was. Mm-hmm. Yes, but Princess Hiori refused to flinch or shudder. She held her gaze. The country's 20 years' worth of torturous memories filled her heart. Stand back. It's too dangerous, Hiori-sama, cried the samurai Denjiro, but she, uh, she brushed aside his hand. Our beloved princess would not yield a single step. Staring into Orochi's devilish face, she delivered a damning epitaph. Her fan held aloft, the Kozuki crest proudly dancing on its edge. No longer having to bite her tongue, she... Like she did for the last 20 years, she cried out, Father, mother, brother, and our homeland, hear this. The Kurozumi were born to burn. And everyone starts absolutely going nuts. Yep. This tears, is a reference. Tears in her eye, though. I, oh, absolutely. I like that. It was resolved, but it is, it's happy tears. All good tears. All you know, good tears. We're finally getting it over with. Yeah. I'm letting it all go in this moment. Yep. We can move on from here. Yeah. Also... Kurizumi uh, is charcoal. Yes, you were telling me just is before the, that I love Yeah, the that. Japanese word for charcoal. Yeah, yeah. And so this is actually a play on Odin's final words, which was uh, Odin wouldn't be Odin if it wasn't boiled. Yep. Now, this is a similar play on words, poetry style, and I dig it. Really, really dig it. Uh, so they continue on to talk about what happens afterwards and how uh, the country comes back together. And it conclu- that concludes today's tale on our nation's renowned samurai and how they miraculously return to us. With that, I think a well-earned break is in order. Till we meet again, farewell. And then Final the actual curtains curtain. close. I like that. I like that little effect, you know? Yep. I'm happy that we are finally out of Wano. Not that I didn't like Wano, but I'm no, happy no, to no, finally no. be done with it. To, to close the chapter on it, because we've been saying goodbye for the oh, last gosh. couple of chapters. And again, I'm really sorry. You know what? Um, reviewing it with you now, um, I appreciate this chapter a lot more. Me too. Um, but reading it, it was just kind of like, all right, we're, we're doing this again. We have more flashbacks. All right, we're still crying about it. Okay, we're still go- saying goodbye. But rereading it with you, um, I don't know. It, it, it's still a rehash of the goodbyes, but I, I enjoyed it more this time. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed reading it with me. I've been really enjoying reading these with yeah. you. And I guess this is a... Any final thoughts on Wano? Because it seems like next chapter we're, we're actually moving on. Um, I liked that we got to see uh, everyone in the Straw Hats kind of evolve. Not only, um, I guess, power level-wise, but like emotionally too. You know? This, this, was, this was a... It was not my favorite arc, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, but I think that it was very important. Um, and I liked a lot of the tales. I liked the side stories. Um, I felt uh, the Kaido fight should have been, if I may be so bold, um, the Kaido fight. There was so many things, there's so many different levels and things like that um, going on all at once. It was very busy for me. And it was like, you know, with uh, King and with Queen and just the fight over and over and over. And then who is defeated? No, wait, they're back. No, wait, defeated again. No, wait, they're back. And then the Kaido fight, like, up in the clouds. And, you know, the impending doom of them crashing. And it's just kind of like there was a lot going on all at once, which it is. It's a big fight. But it kind of took away from the Kaido fight because it was just kind of up in the sky, you know? Yeah. I, I Is it safe to assume that you... What you're saying here is you would rather it be more like the classic One Piece format rather than what I think they were going for, which was to do a new version of the Whitebeard War arc. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I see that now. Because there was no, no fight in the Whitebeard War arc. Yes, it was always just it was fighting. fighting. Going and I, I appreciated yeah. that for this one in that it was a war arc. But mm-hmm. I also can come at it with from the, perspe- yeah. the perspective that you're coming from because it's not... Whitebeard War was not a war about us. No, it was not. This was a war about us. So it should have been more about us. Mm, I like that. I like that reading of it. Okay. Um, I, could, I could see, you know, where you're coming from. Um, not fully convinced, not still in your camp. No. Because fine. I still think that it should have been, um, yes, our fight and everything like that, but it felt like it continued on. And at the very end, storytelling-wise, I would have liked, you know, the end of it being the Kaido and Luffy fight because I feel like it was very prominent and like a lot was going on, you know, not that it didn't have enough screen time, of course, but um, like that should have been more the, the general focus, like as the war is kind of sweeping 
we go in because like the whole time is there was always another level of threat like on the ground for everyone you know yeah i guess you're right i my takeaway on this mm, is that me. before the war actually starts mm. i think this was a one man show i i don't think mm. wano was very interesting mm. i was genuinely invested in everything that zoro was doing though oh yeah Okay. I, I, they really like Odo really pulled the guns out for Zoro here yeah. after having him in the pocket for so long. Yeah, yeah. The, he is now, I believe he's in second place. I, I think he's in second. Okay. For the most, sorry, for a character in One Piece with the most amount of confirmed victories versus a supernova. Yeah. Okay. Kizaru being number one. Yeah. Because he came and he wiped the floor with every single one of them. Yeah. But Zoro in this in this arc beat Hawkins. Yeah. X Drake, killer. Yeah. And a poo. Yep. Four. Four Crazy. people. That's a lot Crazy. of people for him to beat. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was up in a fight. And up in with, a fight after with all With three of, that. of those people, three, yeah. three other people amongst that group were up there, including his captain and the other two captains. Yeah. Killer was there as well. And then Zoro was pulling out feats. Like, yeah. Zoro was just like, oh, I'm going to deal damage to Kaido. Yeah. Oh, God, he can deal damage to Kaido. I'm going to tank a hit which is probably the strongest attack we've seen thrown from an enemy, yes. which is the unison raid from Big Mom and Kaido. And Zoro yes. ate it entirely. Yeah. Entirely. And yeah. then jumped back to go fight King. I was King. like, no, it's okay. I'll fight King now, which yeah. is also a legendary um, a Zoan. A legendary Zoan yeah. on a mythical race on of people. On a mythical race. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot. I just, I felt bad. Every time he got knocked down, I'm like, stay down, please. <laughs> I'm like, just, just for your sake. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that everyone was evolving, like you said. I appreciate... Nico Robin. Oh, gosh. I was very happy yeah. at that little brief stint that we saw and, like, you know, surpass your limit kind of thing. Um, Brooks, we didn't see a lot of. Well, I feel like Brooke had a, a much bigger spotlight in, 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 in Whole Cake. I mean, yeah, he was the MVP he of was Whole Cake. He was the MVP. Absolutely yeah. the MVP. Yeah, yeah. For this, I think I think the MVP still goes to Zoro. Oh, I, absolutely. I do, I do stick yeah, with Yeah, I agree one. with that. And I loved... Nico Robin having a one-on-one -on -one fight for the first time in a long time. Honorary mention to the one-on-one -on -one fight with Nico Robin. I really enjoyed it here. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. excited to see it animated. I'm excited to see who's who versus Jinbei. Oh, yeah. And I think those are the fights that I'm more excited for. I'm actually, honestly, I'm not very excited about King versus Zoro or Sanji versus Queen to be animated. Maybe they'll do a better job in the animation. 20 the, episodes. The, yeah, the manga just felt a little lackluster on it. And yeah. if it takes more than two episodes for them to do, it's going to be too long. It's going to be too long. Yeah. Way too long. I think it's going to be drawn out. Yeah, I get you. Alrighty then. Well, this was a quick wrap up, actually. The, we we didn't really go into the nitty gritty of this because again, it was Recap. just a fourth goodbye. Yeah. So I guess this is a special early or uh, early closing podcast. Uh, yeah. We're from where we are. We're like twenty three minutes in. Oh, is it really? Yeah, we're, we 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 banged through this pretty quickly. Is there anything else you want to mention about Wano? Honestly, I I was filling time by doing that yeah. exact thing, uh, talking about Zoro and yeah. such. I I guess we can do. We're going to enter some spoiler territory real quick. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about some of the teaser stuff that's come about 1058. Yes, which I just learned um, because I don't I don't look for the spoilers, but I get told spoilers, yes. which I enjoy. Because that's me. Yes. Uh, I, I am a fiend. I can't, can't yeah. stay away. And one of the things that we're going to get that I wanted to uh, talk more with you about mm -hmm. is more information about Cross Guild. Yes. Now, last you, chapter, last chapter we found out about Cross Guild. Yes. And I wanted to talk so much about it. And we were so excited to talk about it. And I feel like we did talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. But I definitely still have more energy to put into it. So now that we know the Cross Guild information is coming in the next chapter, what are some of the things that you're hoping to learn about them? I'm really hoping, so I know we touched on this, is who's really pulling the strings? Is it, is it any of them, honestly? You know, that, that's another thing that's kind of like tickling the back of my brain. Is it really them? Do they make a deal? Who are they dealing with kind of thing? Now, the spoilers are very bare bones. Mm -hmm. But from the spoilers, I could deduce there yeah. are two answers to that question. Okay. Yep. All right. There are two answers to that question. One of them makes me very happy, and the other one is very funny. Okay. Yes. All right. The other side of this is uh, they announce bounties in the next chapter. Yes. And I'm going to let you know right now, they do not sleep yeah. on us finally learning uh, your favorite character's bounty. Really? They also don't sleep on the updated bounty for my favorite character. Is it going to be something that I will laugh at or is it something that I will like appreciate? Is it going to be something that I like? 
We're going to like it. We're going to like it? Okay. We're going to like it. All right, it. okay. All right. We're going to have a collective laugh for Buggy, but that we of knew course. that was going to be the case. Yeah, of course there is. Absolutely. And another thing we'll spoil here, if anyone, I was explaining this to Jesse just before we started the podcast, if any of you didn't know, the Yonko and the Yonko class characters like Gold Roger have all had their bounties announced in recent time, like the last couple of years. Yep. And there are weird numbers that don't make it just a flat whole number value. I mean, it is a whole number value. Right, of course. It's not just like a number and then a bunch of zeros. Yeah. It's like four, four, three, eight, and things like that. Yep. And the reason for that is the pronunciation, or at least the first character of those numbers, when pronounced outwardly, sound like the Japanese names of some of these characters. Yep. Like uh, Shiyanku is, is part of yep, Shanks's. Shanks. And for Whitebeard, there's Shiro, which is white. For Kaido, there's Kyujaku, which is uh, one t- 110. And all of the members of Cross Guild who are getting a bounty update we'll have that will time. have references. I love it. And some of the Straw Hats are going to have references. <gasps> yeah, that was, that was one I was you really excited about. You didn't tell me that part. Mm-hmm. It was I, the Cross I wanted your, Yeah, wanted your reaction to that. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. You said updates. You know what? You said updates, so I should have already inferred that it was going to be something like that because you immediately followed up with, hey, did you realize that these numbers are just not numbers? And I think... Thinking back real, real hard, I think maybe I might have known it's like, oh, they're using a specific number. Never looked into it. Bad. I'm a bad fan. I'm <laughs> a bad fan. Um, the Shanks one, now that you said it a second time, kind of tickles the back of my brain also. And I'm like, oh, maybe I did read that in passing at some point. The other ones, fantastic. Did not know. Do you remember Moms? Uh, they just told me. 88, which yeah. is um, Ha Ha, mm-hmm. which sounds like laughing, but is also Mother. Mother. I really liked that. I thought that one was really cool. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the other ones were, I think Gold Roger was Roji-ya. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Roji-ya. And then Blackbeard's, I think he has Kudo in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because that's not that hard to do. Mm -mm. Nine and Mm -hmm. uh, six. Yeah. So Kudo. And then, yeah, so we're going to get, so I have a theory. Yeah. I think that if if your bounty has that, naming convention to it mm-hmm. you've made it that's your last bounty yeah i think that might yeah be the case. that's the pinnacle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which because it stayed static for everyone else yes right so this is kind of like that's it i mean okay so they didn't actually announce if anyone else's bounties had changed from right. what i saw right. from the right. spoilers it was just the nine members of straw hat we haven't seen yet yep. as well as the uh people on the face of cross guild yes yeah yes all right well, we're going to wrap up there then. Thank you guys so much for listening. This was chapter 1057 and a little bit of spoilers for 1058. Go check out some of our other content. We're going to be doing anime reviews. Go check out our streams on Phil Z Media on Twitch. And also check out King's Entertainment Review. Uh, the other channel stuff on here is not necessarily anime related, not necessarily podcast stuff if you're watching this on YouTube. It's more, you know, game reviews yep. and uh, us having friend, having more fun with our friends. Yeah. Myself, my consistent co-host, Jesse. And a couple of other friends, Phil and Jeremy. Well, again, thank you guys and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is where you are. (laughs) I like that.